Today we're going to be taking a look at this IBM Wheelrider 3. Now this particular example isn't in the best of shape, but I got it at a thrift store for next to nothing, so I'm more than happy to take it on as a project. Now one of the interesting things about the Wheelrider 3 is that it came out in 1984, the same year as the Model M, and it uses the same key switches. It is a buckling spring typewriter. However, if we compare this Model M to this Wheelrider, you'll notice that it's not exactly clicking. When I picked this up at the store, immediately the keyboard disintegrated and all of the springs spilled out on the floor. Now, by some miraculous chance, I was able to find all 75 springs. So I'm going to be able to fully restore this keyboard. However, just like the Model M, this uses a steel backplate with all of the key stems held in place with a solid piece of plastic that's riveted to the back with plastic posts. So the only way to fully repair this is to bolt mod it. One difference between the wheel rider and the Model M is how the keys are assembled. The keys on the Model M have a separate stem and cap, but on the wheel rider they are one piece. They are, however, still compatible. Thankfully, it's very easy to get to the keyboard on the Wheel Rider 3. Once you remove this piece of plastic, which will require undoing some latches back here, disconnect the cable for the LEDs. You will have to remove two metal clips from here that I've already done, and then disconnect the ribbon cables in the back. Now, I've already had this apart, trying to find all of the key springs, so this was a lot quicker for me. And this is the keyboard for the Wheel Rider. Now, like the Model M, we have a steel back plate that is held in with plastic rivets, but those plastic rivets have all failed. Ooh, the rubber mat to protect the membranes is coming off. So there is the membrane for a Model M and a wheel rider. So it is fairly similar to a modern keyboard still, but you do have the mechanical action of the buckling spring. Here's an example of one of the plastic posts that would hold the keyboard to the back plane. If I put the metal plate back on top of that, you'll see that post sticking through. There should be a plastic rivet that extends upwards and covers around this. So the idea of doing a bolt mod is to drill a hole through where those posts used to be and to put a nut and bolt there instead. That will hold the pieces together. Now the best way to do this would be to use a drill press. It would allow you to very accurately place the hole and it would be perfectly aligned. However, I don't have easy access to one of those I can film with, so I'm just going to use a regular drill and a steady hand. Now before I start drilling out holes, I'm going to use a silver sharpie to mark which ones I think are most important. You don't need to put bolts through every single rivet, just some in critical places. While tedious, it would be best to remove all of the keys so I don't accidentally drill through them. Hey, now it's down to just plastic. I should go rinse this off. It looks like it may just be a little scuffed up due to age, but it's definitely looking a lot better. Figured I might as well also take the time to clean the keys, since they definitely need it. Alright, just about ready to start. I made a rough jig to hold the piece of plastic in place while I drill on it, and I'm taking my ESD mat off of the top of my desk so I can't accidentally damage it. I'm not 100% sure about what size drill bit I should be using, so I'm going to go ahead and start with a smaller one than I think I need, and then work up if I need a bigger one. So let's see how this goes. Hey, that didn't seem bad. Looks like it does need to be the next size up. Let's go ahead and widen that hole. Oh, that is perfect. All right, now for the ones where there's still a post sticking up, it should really be cut off first. And that's, ugh, that is not going to be easy to drill into right there. So I'm going to do myself a favor and file that down first. And also try making a pilot hole in the top, see if that'll allow the bit to guide into place. All right, I'm going to start with the larger bit for this one. Let's see what happens. Is 
Mm, that's a no. Let me get that back into a shape I can work with. And then I'll start with the smaller one to drill a real pilot hole. Excellent. All right, I think I've got a pattern down, so time to just put in the effort. Alright, time for the fun of putting all the springs back in. That's weird, I swear I'm not missing any springs. Aha, it's this one. And this one that are extras. Oh, that's the really annoying part. Now to put the plate back on. All right, now to put the plate and the bolts back on. Well, it's the first time for the bolts. So I want the heads on the plastic side. So I'm going to run them up from the bottom. I have the bolts, the nuts, but I also bought plastic washers uh, because I don't want to put unnecessary strain on this keyboard. <laughs> so, yeah. That should help reduce some of the force from metal bolts going through plastic that were was not intended for it. And there's the first one through. Wow, some of these are just going to really suck. Well, I think I can pinch it and flip it over now. So let's hope for the best and try that. Alright, looking good. Now this is going to be a lot easier to put the bolts in place. Oh yeah.
I've got all the nuts on the back now and uh, I've tightened them with this, not on this side. I don't feel these should be tightened on that side. On the top row ones could probably be, yeah, just a hair tighter. But uh, yeah, I think this is ready to start reassembly. Unfortunately, uh, I need to wait for my keycaps to dry. Um, but yeah, after that, I'm ready to rock. All right, the keys didn't get super clean because I didn't wipe them off, but whatever, they're close enough. So let's get going. Mm, that one's not buckling the spring. That one is. That moves up and down a little bit. I think I need to add another bolt in this area. Well, now we'll see what happens if I try and add these in after the fact. Should help quite a bit. Still not though. That one does. Now it is. Strange. Yeah, I'm putting another one right here just as a precaution. And again, it's not. Why is that one so loose? Yes, they can just get out of position, I suppose. That's that sucks. Oh, maybe that's fixed. Well, back to it. And there. <clears throat> we got one non cooperational one. They all sound good. All right, now we're ready to reinstall the keyboard into the typewriter. So, I'm gonna slide the ribbon cables in place. The keyboard to align into these grooves. And we will have to reconnect the keyboard ribbons. And depress the connectors. Easier said than done on this one. Then we have to put the metal clips back on that hold the keyboard in place. Ah, 
All right, now the bezel. Reconnect its cable. And it's leaking sponge. And the bezel attaches on the bottom. And there are two clips on the inside. Ah, okay. You just have to you have to raise it up before it'll actually do it. Alright. That's on. Uh the keys all work. I think we're ready to try this thing out. All right, now let's see if it works. Unfortunately, this lever is broken off, so you kind of have to reach in there. All right. Paper down didn't work. Ah, but typing did. Yeah, for some reason, paper down's not working. Let's do a full key test. Six is dead. Oh, nope. Oh, I gotta press really hard. Hmm. Those work. Caps lock works. Shift works. Uh, comma's a little sketchy. Right shift works, space works. Not sure what code does. Uh, uh, there we go. Yep, code works. Ooh, that's cool. That works. That works. Works. Yep. I uh, did. Yep. Yeah, no paper down. Micro up and down work. Not sure what line space does actually. Oh, whoops, shift. Oh, that's not good. Ooh, oh, line space is working. Okay, so, yeah, that's a lot more than that. Mmm, I want that paper down. So it works, it's just not happy. Probably add another bolt near that area. How about six? Urgh. Six should be happy, yeah. Maybe it was just a poor alignment. Oh, that's much better. Uh, were any others not happy? I think that, well, shift is, yeah, shift got some issues there. Could have just been an alignment thing. Mm, I don't know. May want to grease the shaft for shift. So that should work a lot better. Oh, paper down is kind of working. It doesn't like being depressed all the way. Interesting. All right, so let's see what some typing on a Wheel Rider 3 looks like. Oh, 
this is nice. Ah, uh, shift is locked down. That's not good. Yeah, this thing's pretty cool. Well, that's about all I want to cover for right now. The other repairs that need done, this and the lever in the back, I'm going to do later. And I want to take another look at this in another video. Oh, hey, look, a wheel rider too. So we'll get back to these in an upcoming video. But for now, I'll see you later.